Welcome to the Midweek Market Update, where I do a technical analysis and give you my thoughts on SPY the Qs and IWM. This week, I also have five-ish kind of trade ideas for you towards the end of the video, so definitely stay tuned for those. First of all, let's jump into the S&P analysis by starting with the sectors, as we always do. Who was leading, who was losing, and where was the weight? Leading the pack today was the real estate sector, so up to the tune of 1.72%, and down at the bottom of the barrel, we have the energy sector down about 1.5%. As we know, though, neither of those two sectors really make up a significant weight inside of the S&P. So what does? Well, certainly our XLK for the tech sector here, pretty much flat, only up three basis points. The XLF for financial sector is the second heaviest weight down about 0.6. So that's kind of significant uh, and is enough reason for the S&Ps to be red, especially considering that the third heaviest weighted sector, the XLV for healthcare, is only up uh, three basis points as well. So pretty much flat here in two of the top three. And this one, the financials, certainly putting the drag on the S&P for lower today. So let's go ahead and check in on some of these charts, just make sure that risk isn't mounting in one place versus another. And taking a look at the XLK, it certainly looks fine, right? In terms of what we have on our hands, it's just simply three days of balance. We'll, and we'll talk more in depth about this as we get into the broad market. But from a sector perspective, we're not reading into it too much. We did make a higher high. Now, of course, we just want to see trend continuation. And of course, we want to see uh, higher lows continue to form. So ideally, we go sideways here and hold on to this 158.30. But if we do pull back and go lower, the line in the sand for the uptrend to really remain intact from a candle by candle perspective would be here at 156.40. Anything underneath the top of this breakout zone at 154.50 should be the next up area where we do see a major higher low form. And what I mean by major, right, is something like this. So here's a major low. This would be your next major low. If we went sideways or pulled back or even did something like this, that could potentially be another major major higher low instead of just an incremental one, right? Where you do something like this, this is more candle by candle type analysis. So in terms of the XLK, it looks fine. And again, we'll talk more about the three days of balance as we get deeper into the broad market. Next up, we'll look at the XLF for the financial sector. Not sure if I just said that backwards. I'm having a little deja vu here, uh, but the XLF financials, it looks fine, right? In terms of making this equal high, remember that we came all the way up from the bottom. So this was a significant distance to travel without any pullback in the middle. So it's fine to see some sort of pullback here. What we want to see happen is a higher low form, and it basically just has to be anywhere over this 37 area. You can see that I have a line on the chart at 38. That's simply noting that it would be ideal for about 50% of the range and a nice psychological number to provide that higher low, but it doesn't have to be at that area. Again, just remember 3721 is the number to beat on any sort of higher low. So it could look like this, and then we come back up, make another equal high, and then there's potential for one more, and then a higher high. So something that may unfold like that. Uh, if we do come down into 37, just note that this is going to be an obviously a sideways trend, and it's not really going to help out a ton with the overall direction of the broad market as it's going sideways and not trending in one direction or another. While we're talking about financials, let's take a look at the TNX for the 10-year rate, of course, and clearly there hasn't really been much going on here. If you remember what we've talked about for the past couple of weeks now, it's just sideways, right? There's really no trend that's in place ever since this downtrend kind of came to an end and is really just again, just going sideways. It's as simple as that. What the Fed did announce at the Jackson Hole Symposium was that they do have a plan to begin tapering, but what they did announce was that they did not have a plan in place yet to start raising and hiking rates. So that is noteworthy that, you know, you shouldn't see a huge impact on the TNX or even the 30-year rate just yet. As we know, 15 is still sort of that inflection point to the upside. And now simply because we kind of have a floor in place just above or below 12, if you will, I would start to argue that's the inflection point to the downside, where if it really starts moving back underneath, you could start to see that impact the market in a different way. Remember that as the TNX goes up, that's going to do well for the financials. And as it goes down, it's going to do better for the tech sector. OK, so that's the correlation there. Let's wrap up the three main sectors with the XLV here for healthcare, And then we'll take a look at volatility. Healthcare, as we know, just kind of sideways. And we discussed this in last week's video as well. Given the very impressive run that it's been on here, it's kind of, you know, not due. Nothing's ever due for consolidation or needs to consolidate, but it's not out of the out, out of what would seem reasonable, correct, right? If we look at what happened in here after this pretty intense run that we were on, it consolidated for quite some time before making the next leg higher. And I do think that's what we're starting to see right here, especially with some of the concerns about the uh, FDA and the booster shots and all that stuff. I don't want to get into the fundamentals, but I do think it could just cool off as there's a little bit more uh, question mark speculation kind of here as opposed to just clear trend continuation. Obviously, we respected this 133.7 
75. So that does strike me as more bullish than bearish. And as that continues to hold, bullish price acceptance up here. Again, that's just more bullish as opposed to clear price rejection being more bearish. So that's the XLV in a nutshell here. The number to beat to the upside is about 137 the whole dollar. Let's take a look at our volatility now, taking a look at the VIX. And what I want to point out from this perspective is obviously we've been up here at all time highs in the past uh, trading week or so. And I just want to remind you of the complacency effect. So what that is, we talk about it on the channel. As we start spending more and more time down here towards the floor at 15, any slight uptick in volatility should lead to a much larger uptick in volatility simply because people aren't expecting it, right? As the VIX gets lower, people are more comfortable with their positions and a little uptick can catch people off guard. So just start to be on the lookout for any period that would look like this, maybe five plus days that start spending more time sub 16. You want to be on sharper alert for the potential of that complacency effect, the spike to start occurring as we've just outlined for now, completely fine. Just showing us that again, uh, you know, volatility is collapsing a little bit. Look for smaller ranges on your days instead of massive, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30 point days inside of the ES. Start expecting maybe 15 or 10 or five point days, even though that sounds so minuscule as we come into 15. So that's going to wrap up sort of the behind the scenes look. Take, let's now uh, shift over to the S&P chart itself and talk more about those three days of balance, which I was alluding to in the XLK. So for now certainly on the grind higher, right? We did make a move higher uh, on Monday and it was sort of an unsupported rally. We'll talk more about that as we get into the internals. Uh, but for now, we're just consolidating inside of what is now a three-day balance. So what we can do is of course, mark off our highs and our lows and just sort of look at this as a guide. We're gonna start looking for longs over the top and we're gonna start looking for shorts under the bottom to get into some of those targets which we have outlined from the weekly watch list video on Sunday, right? So underneath us, we still have this uh, 448 and 447 is important. It's kind of gonna be the gatekeeper for this large gap underneath. Again, I'm not saying it has to go there. These are just the signposts that we sort of use if a large down move, a large downdraft does, does start to develop inside of the marketplace as a whole. I do wanna echo, echo the sentiment of the video from Sunday though and just say that if you're looking for swing trade positions in the SPY itself, this is not the time to be hunting for new longs simply because of the nature of how far we've traveled and the structure underneath us. It's kind of ripe for a liquidation break that's probably going to catch a lot of people off guard and it's going to give us something like uh, some of these past cycles, which brings me to my next point. Although I'm not a huge believer in cycles or, you know, monitoring this stuff too closely, I do think it's interesting that if we do something like this, so from our first 50 SMA touch uh, to our next one, I'll put a click in here. Uh, if we could get that, there we go. And then we'll do the same thing from this 50 SMA touch to this one in here. And if, yep, there we go. And then we'll do it one more time from this one to in here. And what this is gonna do is just give us kind of a broad range uh, of where a potential, if this cycle is going to continue, if market symmetry is going to continue, remember we talked about that on Sunday, this is gonna give us a potential range of where we could see a pullback start to develop. Again, I'm not saying it has to do this, it's just something interesting that I have observed in the past couple of days. So for me, I'm looking at this time zone right here as some potential area where we could see a pullback inside of the marketplace. It would make sense to me, again, if we're sort of looking at this, as the equivalent to the beginning of this right here that we see a little while longer, maybe another up move, and then it pulls back, right? That would look something like this, a little more consolidation, maybe an up move, and then it pulls back somewhere inside of that box, which I've just outlined. It's kind of far-fetched. It's not something I always lean on super heavily inside of these videos. I'm just telling you about what I'm thinking here as a potential scenario to unfold inside of the SPY. Let's take a look at the market internals now, get sort of back to reality, if you will. Up here in the top left-hand corner, this video is gonna explain what this all is how you can use it, how you can set it up and how it will make you uh, or help you make better trading decisions on an intraday basis. The first thing I want to point out from the volume perspective is that from both directions, there has not been a read that's really gotten outside of 100 million in either direction. That's just basically telling us that volume here across the market, the breadth across the market is extremely weak given the backdrop of Monday's rally. And you heard me talk about that, that it was sort of a spineless rally. And uh, this is one of the reasons, right? The breadth here on Monday was absolutely horrible even though the market you can see down here in the bottom right hand corner made an aggressive move to the upside on poor internals again here on the ADD sideways just under the zero line actually negative on the day in the face of a huge market rally right same thing on Tuesday sort of sideways and moving a little bit more healthily there on today's activity on Wednesday same thing in the tick right especially looking at that Monday session why was this flat across the entire market 
if the ES, the S&Ps essentially, were running so hard to the upside. This is just sort of raising a question mark to me, indicating, you know, that most of the structure here was poor, and that's probably why we saw this uh, retrace into the uh, opening bell on Tuesday. Again, that's in the past now. What are we going to do going forward? I do think it's noteworthy while we're looking at the internals to at least mention the fact that, of course, they still are on the bullish side primarily into the remainder of the week, right? Tuesday was positive, Wednesday was positive, Tuesday was positive, 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 and positive, right? So it's not like we're just throwing caution to the wind here and saying short the market. We're just saying maybe be a little bit more skeptical. You wanna see internals confirm these moves as opposed to being so-so when we're at all-time highs. The last thing I'll point out before we move over to the market profile is the fact that we have an all-time high in the ES, which was set in an overnight session, and that generally does not tend to hold as the true all-time high of any given move. So I do think that could use some repair up there at 45, 42, 25. Now let's take a look at our market profile. Again, if you're not familiar with this chart and you want to learn more about the terms I'm about to start using, definitely check out this video in the top right hand corner. It'll discuss everything uh, in depth to get you started with the market profile. Main things to discuss from uh, today's or this week's session rather are the single prints that happened on Monday. As we know, that was a very structurally poor rally and that left single prints in our wake. Most of it did fill here on Tuesday, but very interestingly enough, right, we made something like this a higher low technically remember this right single prints you're going to treat them as if they're a gap very poor structure there if sellers were really strong they should have at least made it to the low of single prints here and on tuesday they could not do that again so that's telling you something about the nature of the sellers who are in this market the last thing to consider here is the fact that we had a poor high here a poor high here this one has been repaired and this one has not okay so if we do make a move up through the regular trading session hours uh poor high you can see it's acting as a double top we have here as well as here technically has not been repaired if we move up through it i would just imagine that the target is the overnight all-time high which we discussed up there around 45 42 25 or whatever it was from that prior chart aside from that the balance does look intact remembering that our value areas here are just more overlapping as opposed to breakaway in one direction or another so i would say again the balance is certainly in play looking for over again the top something like that or underneath the lows something that's down here to unlock some of those targets we discussed on the SPY daily chart. Let's take a look now at the rest of our broad market, starting off here with the Qs, and then we'll jump into the IWM. So certainly the Qs look a little different than the S&Ps with a larger inverted hammer that's printed on today's session. So I would start to think that maybe this could lead to a little bit more of a pullback. That would make sense to me. SPY is in a balance. Why is the Qs sort of being aggressive, especially as we know when the XLK was pretty much flat, right? So to me, this could see a little bit of pullback into this range, which would look something like that. The line in the sand to the downside is uh, 376.25. Underneath that, again, you're looking at a little bit more of a failure and the potential, I imagine, for something like this. This, right so if we do this and then come down underneath you're looking at now something like this which now what we've drawn is essentially a head and shoulders right so you would look for lower out of that pattern probably to fill the gap just something i'm speculating about for now in terms of the levels and what we're seeing directly in front of us i would imagine that a small pullback could be in store but we're not really taking action to the downside maybe an intraday scalp um but you know watching rather for a pullback to buy in an overall bull market right so if we come into here watch out for any intraday reversals for something that may look like that same thing goes for this level in here at 373 the whole dollar next up we'll take a look at our iwm russell 2000 and the small caps and they've essentially done nothing all week just like our s p's kind of caught up sideways in a three-day balance starting to poke at the top end of the box uh, but we do know that 227 is simply resistance and if we look at where we've come from right this is a significant move it would make sense to me that it took a couple of days to digest that move and now we can make a decision right is it going to be higher over 227 into the top of the overall range let me zoom this out so you can see that again that's this range range here. So there's your overall range. So is it higher out of 227 to the top of the range in here, in which case I would expect another pullback and then maybe something like that? Or is it going to be rollover and just more chop in this general area of the chart, which we know is just going to signal more of a neutral risk, not risk on, not risk off. Just again, if you've got them, hold them. If you don't have them, maybe just sit on your hands and wait for a better opportunity. Now let's get into these five-ish kind of trade ideas. The reason I say ish, uh, we'll see that in just a minute here. The first one is NIO for NEO. And this is a simple range. Uh, area. Let me clean up this chart for us actually and start from scratch here. And all I want to do is just shift your attention to what we have down here. Oops, we've got to use the other tool. Let's try that. There we go. This is going to be much better. So 
This is gonna be the high of the balance area and this is gonna be the low of the balance area. Very simple. As you know, whenever we have areas of balance on the breakout, we're looking for a doubling of that range. Where does that put us? Well, looking left, there's not a whole lot of candle structure until we get into some of these lows from in here. And those lows are right around 43.65, it's the 50 SMA. So to me, I would first look at maybe 42 the whole dollar and then monitor for continuation. This is all gonna hinge upon if we get the breakout up and over 39.61 on strong volume. And you know, of course, we also don't wanna see the broad market pulling back if we're looking at a long trade idea, okay? So that's what I'm thinking about here. If it remains sideways in this range, not so interested in taking a breakout trade until it actually takes out the top end. And again, being very careful to the downside if it does decide to do the same thing to the downside, Side, uh, we could use again the same rules here to look for a downside target but as the chart currently sits with these two bullish days back to back I would sort of be favoring the upside the downside target if it does pan out would be around 34 next trade idea is sort of the ish trade idea so it's going to be on GM which is yet again another balance area if I just zoom in here uh, it's not as clean as Neo, but you can start to see this pressure cooker top is developing right around, uh, let's call it 50 the whole dollar. Let's adjust that level down just a bit. And you can also see, oops, if we clean that up, let's try again. So there's 50 the whole dollar. And you can see that today's trading session, even though we had a red day across the market, it was just kind of neutral, right? It was a doji, it wasn't really sure. So you could look for the breakout of 50 to take us into probably the high from in here around 52, or you could look for the breakdown. This one, I would be more uh, willing to trade either direction than NEO underneath our 48.62 to probably just take us down into this low here at 47. These trades, which I'm talking about, aren't necessarily swings. They're more just quick scalp ideas that you can take advantage of. On a quick pop here, again, you're looking at a target there. And on a quick flush, you're probably just looking to trade into 47 uh, for a quick flush down to the downside. So that's GM, and it's sort of very similar to what we have in BA. That's why it's an ish trade, right? So GM and uh, BA are almost one and the same in terms of setup. That's why it's five-ish, not completely five, not completely four, right? Somewhere in the middle, but same idea here. Again, with the inverted hammer and upper wick red day on today's session, more willing to trade it to the downside for a quick trade down towards 211. If it happens to go over 222.91, call it 223, then I would be fine trading it to the upside for a quick scalp up towards that 226.34. Same sort of idea as what we just talked about on GM. Next up is gonna be on JMIA for Jumia, of course. This is something we haven't talked about in quite some time. But zooming in, you can see I've been following this a little bit. There was a resistance trend line break, really solid volume coming in today. And also we had a prior area of balance, right? So a lot of consolidation here, I would imagine, or you know, I, I'm personally looking for some upside continuation. In that case, the next upside target is really clearing 2263 to unlock the door to this area in here at 2440. So something to keep on the radar, this could potentially be more of a swing as opposed to just a quick scalp intraday trade. After that, you know, way up here's the next target up, or, uh, up around uh, 2731, but just monitoring the start of what looks like could be a daily trend reversal up and over that resistance trend line. Next and lastly, we have LMND for Lemonade. And this is more of a, uh, just I'm noticing an inflection point, right? I can already have that on the uh, chart here. You can see all of the times, very nuanced that we've bounced off of 79.75. And then, uh, you know, we broke it, obviously moved back through it. And then once again, support, support, and now we have an inverted hammer off of it. So if it does roll over here, the area you're looking for is simply this set of lows in here. We'll map that out with a level at 71.71. Or if it breaks out higher, you're looking for your next cluster really up here around 91.16. So all things considered, I think we're at a tipping point one way or another here inside of Lemonade, just because of how nuanced this 79.75, call it 80 the whole dollar, uh, just how nuanced this level is, right? So Lemonade, something to keep on your radar. That's that's going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed it or learned anything new, certainly let me know in the comments section or by giving the video a thumbs up. Don't forget our main channel is linked in the description and all of that being said, I wish you a green trading week.